For those of you who've used HS Touch for a little while now and you've had a chance to mess around with things like sliders, you know it's pretty simple. Uh, if you want to control, let's say, a light with a slider, all you've got to do is just drag a slider over to a screen, uh, make sure its orientation is set correctly, and then change the status tracking property to the specific device that you want to control. In this case, uh, for example, I'll change it to uh, picture window lamp. Okay, and that's really that's all I need to do. I can deploy this screen now and I'll be able to control that device right away. So it's, it's a fairly simple process. But what about a slider that does a little bit more than that? What if you wanted the slider to reflect uh, the actual value of the device. So as you dim it up or down, it displays 40 or 50 or 60 percent dim. Uh, and also maybe you want to turn uh, that device quickly on or off. How do you do that? Well, a simple slider isn't going to get the job done, but you can create what we call a complex slider. And uh, the way to do that is uh, we're going to start a little differently. Uh, let me clear my screen here, get the simple slider out of there. A complex slider is a collection of elements that are all placed on top of each other and they do different things. And I have um, uh, a graphic already created for that. So let me, let me go to the graphics palette here and pull over what is going to be our background for this complex slider. Okay, notice it, it looks a little like the other slider. The difference though is that there's an area up top uh, where we're going to be displaying the actual value of the lamp and there's also an area down below where I'm going to tuck a little button in there so that we can turn the lamp quickly on or off. Well the first thing I want to do though is position this to exactly the location I want it to be in my screen and then I want to lock it to the background. The reason I want to lock it to the background is actually a couple of reasons. One is when I set lock to background to true, it actually draws that graphic on the background and that allows me to place other elements on top of it. The other reason I do that too is so that I don't accidentally nudge it with my mouse and see I can't do it. Now if I do want to move it, I, I can still select it and nudge it with my keyboard like so. Pretty easy to do, but uh, otherwise it, it keeps it in place. Alright, so that's the first thing I want to do. Then I want to go and start adding elements to this to turn it into our complex slider. The first element I want to add is a text uh, element and that's over here on the Others palette. Drag over text and I'll just tweak it a little bit here. I don't have to be super concerned with alignment just yet because we'll align everything when we're done. But I do want to adjust some of the properties. Uh, the text that shows up here is too small. So I'm going to change that from Arial to Arial Black, which is a, a good thick text. And I want to change from 10 point to uh, 16 point. There we go. Uh, and re remember, this is only going to display up to the number 100, so only three characters. So even though TEXT is bleeding off the edge here a little bit, that's fine. Uh, 100 should, should display just perfectly. Now, in order to make this reflect the actual value of the lamp though I have to come down to the properties pane here at the bottom and go to the status tracking property and I'm going to select for the association type home seer devices and then I'm going to pick the actual home seer device in this case it's going to be the picture window lamp. Notice uh, that status text comes up by default and this is going to it'll display either on off or dim. I don't want that I want value so I'm going to change that over here. Okay, so that's my very first element. Looks like that's all set up. Next thing I want to do is create or actually place on top of my slider background an actual working slider. And uh, in fact, I've created uh, a special slider for that purpose. And this slider has a transparent background. So here it is over in the elements palette. Uh, this particular slider is included with the library of elements with HS Touch, or of course you can create your own if you have uh, an image editor like Photoshop. All right, so um, we've got that positioned in place now. I've got to do a couple of things to it. First of all, I need to make sure that the orientation of the slider is set to vertical, so the button travels in the right direction. 
I also want to track in real time too. So as I'm going up or down, it reflects instantly the status of that lamp. So I'm going to set track real time to true. And now I want to come down here and adjust the status tracking property to that same device, to that same picture window lamp. Good enough. So that, that should take care of that element. Now remember, the last thing I want to do is place a button at the bottom here that's going to turn uh, the lamp on or off instantly. And uh, for that, I want to, I want to use uh, an image graphic. And I've actually created one called Blob, which has three different states. I have Blob Dim, I have Blob Off, and I also have Blob On. doesn't matter which one you drag to your screen. And again, you don't have to be too fussy about alignment just yet. We'll, we'll do that at the end of the process here. Okay, but um, first thing, let's go over here and adjust the status tracking normal property so that we're tracking that same lamp. Okay, watch what happens. As soon as I do that, I get this new property called status images. And status images is where I can specify exactly which image is going to show up when the lamp is on, off, or dim. So we'll go into the image editor, add my first image, and let me turn this into thumbnail so you can see what I'm going to select here. For the on state, I'm selecting blob on. I'm going to add another image here. This is going to be for the off state, blob off. Be sure to adjust the status tracking characteristic here to off. Okay, one more image. And that's going to be blob dim. And once again, change the status to dim here. Okay, so now I have my button in place. One more thing I have to do to it though, and that is I have to turn it into a button. It's a tracking status right now, but that's all it's doing. So to turn it into a button, go up to the top of the properties pane into the actions section. And where I've got this ignore presses set to true, I need to set that to false because we do not want it to ignore the presses. We want it to act on the presses. Okay, so in this case, uh, you can do either actions when pressed or released. And I've got uh, my action editor up. The action that I want to select here is to control a home seer device. One more time, it is the picture window lamp. And the action is going to be to toggle that lamp on or off. I'll say okay to that. Okay, so all of the elements now are on the, on the slider. I've got the text element up top, I've got the, the slider itself, and uh, the button down below. The last thing I want to do before I deploy this is align everything. And to do that, I select the background graphic, hold the control key down on your keyboard, and now select the text element, the slider element, and the button element. Go to the Format menu up top, select Align, and then Center and that nudges everything into place. At this point, I'm going to save this project and then deploy my client so we can take a look. Okay, so now we can see the slider deployed in the client and running on my computer here. Um, notice uh, the text value up top is zero. The uh, slider is at its bottom level and the button at the bottom is also black. So uh, that's a pretty good indicator that our lamp is turned off. If I press the button at the bottom. Watch what happens. The slider zooms to the top and I also have 100% for my dim level. If I grab the slider button and I begin to inch it down, notice as I'm doing it e the value changes and also the color of the button at the bottom changes. I can drag it all the way down. I got zero in black again or I can drag it all the way up and I have 100 and yellow again. So that's working like a charm. Pretty cool. And that's how you create a complex slider in HS Touch.